Hi everyone, this is John. I had the option of sleeping in this morning or, you know what, instead I came to photograph this old theater. Uh, I'm in San Clemente and I was here maybe a couple weeks ago and I found this old theater I thought it looked really cool but with the lighting and the direction it faces I thought it would be really cool for sunrise. But we've had a lot of overcast mornings so I just thought I'd put it off to another time. And finally today we have a clear morning coming and the sun's just starting to hit it and I came out with my medium format Mamiya camera and it's this is sort of an experiment um, to see I'm trying to learn how to incorporate it into my workflow um, I just bought this uh, a couple weeks ago a few weeks ago and um, had it get a little repair it's still not quite uh, as pristine as I would like it to be but we're getting there um, anyway, so I thought I'm going to come this morning. Uh, the angle I originally scouted out, it's being blocked. There's a van parked right in the front. And it's kind of annoying, but, you know, whatever. So it forced me to go to another spot across the street. And so right now I'm just waiting for the sun to rise. And it's funny because this camera is all manual. Um, there's a light meter built into the viewfinder, which is kind of cool. But it requires waiting for the lighting to be as you want it. So I, I don't know how to prepare the uh, exposure yet. So right now I've got color fill. Actually, I don't know if it's color or black and white. I forgot the little tabs to put in the back. So I'm learning as I go. So bear with me. I'm setting up my exposure kind of have the composition as I want it. And I have, yeah, I have color film in here. I was looking at my uh, other film backs. The one thing I really like about these cameras is you can swap out color to black and white or various films without uh, using up the whole roll. So, kind of fun. But well, the sun's starting to hit it and it's just this cool thing, so I'm going to set up my exposure real quick. This camera has a spot meter built in. You just push this button and it turns on. And you set the dial. And it gives you an exposure reading here to uh, adjust accordingly. So I'm trying to teach myself the, the zone system. Got a camera release. So the exposure is really soft right now because the sun's just not over the horizon. That's kind of how I like it for now. I'm gonna do a few exposures. And now I have to wait till I go get the film developed, scanned, and then movie magic. Like I was saying with this camera, this type of medium format, the, the film is interchangeable where you can have a, you have different cartridges and you can just replace it. So right now I've got some uh, Delta 100 that I want to use and it's black and white. So you always take this dark slide and keep it in. I can change the film. I don't know if you've heard of the zone system, but there's something Ansel Adams came up with where when you expose with your light meter, it 
you expose for this middle gray. So when you hit your light meter and it says photograph at this uh, setting, it's uh, telling you you're going for this middle gray. Now, if something is white or black or dark, whatever, your tone is generally going to be, if you set your camera at that setting, whatever you were pointing at, you know, it's going to come out to that middle gray. This is assuming you're doing black and white. But the same applies to color. So what you do is you count stops. So like if you want something to be brighter, you count one stop, two stops, three stops, and you open your aperture or your shutter speed or ISO, whatever you're using. In this game, it's film. My ISO is set to 100. It's just, it's stuck at 100 because that's the speed of the film. Assuming it's digital, you could do the same, you could adjust it. So, with, uh, if you want your object to be brighter, like this white building, I open my uh, aperture or my shutter speed to a few stops brighter, and so it'll get that uh, object white. Or not too white, because it'll show, this shows it's getting too bright, and if you keep going, that's when you lose detail, and it just, you know, you. It's not good. If you want your object to be darker, you can go accordingly. So one of the things I was nervous about in getting a camera like this, it's completely manual and having to think of color balance or uh, exposure balance with the light meter. I've gotten so used to digital, I've, I've lost how to do that. And so this is teaching me again how to think, like what do I want this photo to look like? And to know have a good estimate of how it's going to look before getting it back because it'll be a week before I'll see this photo. So, right now, for example, on the face of the, the building, it's telling me at, at uh, F11, that 15th of a second, that's the middle gray, that's the what it's pointing at. So I want it to be on more in the white. So I count, okay, on here, one stop, two stop, three stop, four stop. Four stops brighter. So I can count one, two, three, four, set it to where it says shutter speed to one, whatever that means, one tenth of a second. And in theory, it should look as I'm seeing it. Focus is geared. So now that I switched to black and white film, um, I'm not thinking in terms of color, obviously, I'm thinking in terms of contrast. So I have the, I'm still gonna have the exposure set to have that, uh, the building to be a gleaming white once the sun hits it. But I want to darken the sky, and there's a few ways to do that um, in camera, not in Photoshop. Um, one way is to use a polarizer, I suppose. That'll darken the sky. But there's also other ways to use filters. This one's a, a red filter, and when the sky is blue, this, this uh, cancels out, this darkens the, the blue. There's other filters to darken colors or lighten colors, you know. I'm not too familiar with them yet. <coughs> I'm learning as I go, but for now, I know the sky is going to be blue, so I've got a red filter. Now that I've put a filter on, it's darkening the exposure, so I have to, re I have to rethink that. I'm still waiting for the sun to come up, so I'm not really sure what my exposure is going to be. But I use this. Check the dial here. Check my zone system. And then wait. Now that the sun is finally out, I'm doing exposure really quick.
going to black and white. Get my filter, meter. and expose. Keep forgetting the dark slide. Well, I moved across the street. I just want to get details of this tower part of the theater. And just as I got here, I noticed the moon's right above it. So I thought it was kind of cool. So I setting up real quick. And basically this exposure is the same as across the street. So I'm not too worried about that. Make sure everything's locked. This thing, okay, this thing is heavy. It's about eight pounds. So I'm using a video tripod head just to give it uh, some better stability. Use a cable release. Well, that's it for this location right now. I'm gonna go to one more spot in San Clemente right now. I'm near Camp Pendleton in near San Clemente, just outside of Camp Pendleton. And a couple weeks ago, I was in San Clemente just looking around the beach and I had my film camera with me. I was trying to find something unique to photograph with it, and I just Googled things to see in San Clemente. And one of the things that, that came up were, was the first baptismal site when the first missionaries came to California. And so I was curious what that would look like, so I went, I just plugged into Google Maps and it, and it led me to about 200 yards before it where I was stopped at the Camp Pendleton Gate, and I didn't really pay attention that I was going to the Marine base. So long story short, I couldn't get in, so I thought I'll have to leave that to another day. Um, if you're a Marine and you'd like to get me in, I'd be much appreciated. Um, but also along the way on the road, I saw this um, power line with boots, Marine boots, and. In, they just, they were all hung up, but I just thought it looked, inter it looked inter interesting. It's a very busy road. And so uh, I just wanted to stop and, I wanted to come back when the lighting was better and everything to photograph it, and here I am. I've got my format, medium format camera, shooting black and white. And beyond that, I just want to think about these boots. Um, I've been to neighborhoods where there's boots hung or shoes hung on power lines, and I've always heard it's to demark or mark out uh, like gang. This is a gang area, or uh, drugs or something. But seeing how these are marine boots outside a marine base. Um, I'm curious what the story is. I have no idea. I haven't been able to ask anybody. Um, but it makes me wonder if it's about brotherhood or sacrificing for your brotherhood or something else altogether. So if you're a Marine, you're at Camp Pendleton or any other base, maybe you know what these, these might be about. Um, feel free to comment below or even if you just uh, want to talk about brotherhood, what it means to you. Um, or your platoon, or feel free to comment. I'd be curious to know. Well, that's it for now. Feel free to leave comments or questions down below. Feel free to subscribe. Uh, I've got more to come with the Mamiya. I want to do film, com film comparisons and maybe digital comparisons. Uh, so stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Bye.